Oh, man. Word, word. All right, man. It's your boy, Coach of Talk, Bav in the building, man. Today, I got a very, very, very special guest. Let the people know who you are. Got EV Boy today, Bab. What's going on, my brother? Everything's good, man. How you feeling today, King? Man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Word, word. For the, for the people that may not know, man, I know a lot of people right now, they be tuning into Stars every Sunday. They watching the new BMF series. This is the guy that's portrayed by Wood Harris. He's playing the character named Pat. This is the real Pat. This is E.D. Boy, man. Salute to you, man. Thank you for joining us today. Bro, well, man, I'm glad to be with you, my brother. Word. So um, let's just start from the beginning of your, of your story, man. You was born in Detroit? Born in Detroit, man. Well, raised in New York, Brooklyn, man. See, that's I think that's the thing a lot of people don't know. Talk to us about that, like... When did you go to New York? Uh, my mother uh, took us to uh, New York, man, when I was three years old, man. My pops got killed, and uh, we moved there, man. I was like two and a half, three years old, man. Were, would you say that you went to New York to, like, try to get away from what was going on in Detroit? Your mom? That was my mom's uh, plan. That's what she wanted to do, but uh, it didn't end up like that. <laughs> <laughs> so, like... Talk to us about your times in New York. Like, what year was that when you was in New York and you spent in New York? Okay, well, I was, like I said, I was three years old. So that was like uh, 67, man. And I came back to, uh, and I was there all through, I think, to like 78, 79. That must have been a, that must have been a completely different time in New York, though. I was born in the 90s. So. Right. That was you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even think my mom's came over here yet at those at those years. Yeah, man, it, it was wild, man. But you know, uh, I love that fast life, like out there, man. Um, I was raised out there. Uh, I had a good uh, mentor out there, man. For I, my man Caesar, man, he taught me that street life out there. Yeah, and that's what started me, you know, in the game out there, man. That was my first. That was my, as you say, that was my first plug out there, man. Word. So, like, would you say, so New York, you got started in the game in New York type shit. Right. So what made you come back to Detroit after all that? Well, my, mo my mother didn't like the direction I was going in, man. <laughs> Both ways, right? So she just moved us back to, uh, mainly all, uh, her family was back here in Detroit. Okay. You know, her, her father was there, there in New York, yeah, living in Long Island. And, uh, but uh, all the rest of her family, uh, on my father's side and her side, is from Detroit. Word. So, like, what was, like, what was the game like in New York during that time? Was okay. it even a game? Yeah, it, it, it definitely was a game, man, because Caesar had it going on, man. He was the man, and... Uh, Everything they was doing, I admired, and I I was just so fixated on that, and and I just you know went with wanted that work, man. And, you know he put me down, man. I, I was man. I first started just you know fucking around with his pigeon coops, man. Yeah. And, you know I wanted more. Than, you know I put that from that man from you know being a lookout man, uh, you know corner man, and then running that bag. A lot of people hear the term pigeon coop, and I think people don't really know what that is. Like, can you explain to the people what that is exactly? In New York, uh, and I think Cali as well, uh, on the rooftops of the apartment building, people had pigeon coops. They raised pigeons. Yeah. You know? So they, they, they had them. The, uh, that they, they, I forgot the word that they used, that they, they would click them out. You know, the one with five or or something, becoming or something like that. But the birds was real smart. And, <laughs> and they loved them. They were pets, man. That's crazy, though. Like, I feel like that's, I feel like that's, like, it sounds older, but that's a little more advanced. You feel me? Like, he was low-key playing with that. Yeah, for sure. Word. So when you came back to Detroit, would you say you bought, like, a New York swag with you over there? For sure, man. And, you know, that's, you know, that's what it got me in a lot of trouble, man. <laughs> With these cats out here, man, they didn't understand that, man. You know, that fast talking, 
and, and the fashion that I, you know, I was I was wearing stuff that that, that you know, because New York was getting it first before Detroit. You know that as well. Yeah. I understand the clothes and how you know the way me and my sister were talking, and, and it, it just people took to the whip. You know what I'm saying? But the, 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 these cats out here, man, they didn't like it, and, and and I ran with it. Fuck it, why not, right? <laughs> That's crazy though. So like, were you the you started the Fifty Boys in New York, or you started that team when you came back out here? No, I started the Fifty Boys in Detroit, but uh, before before the Fifty Boys came along, you know, I the Fifty Boys came along in my time in the street, uh, like halfway in the street. Yeah, like you, you know, was more established. When I was in the streets, man, I had crews, man. You know, you know. All over the city of Detroit, man. You know, from from uh from Ramis to the East Side, man. U.S. Side. I had you know crews, you know, pushing weight, man. Back then, you know, before the uh, Fifty Boys. Actually, my first crew that I got put down out here uh, was the Raphael crew. My man Pops and Tavio, you know, you know they, which was called the Twelfth Street Boys in the in the movie. Oh, okay, okay. So that was the other team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how was that like? How was that time out there? So you was you was running with them at first. Yes, the Fifty Boys came later, but you know the Raphael crew was the first one, one of the first crew, you know that I, I put down out here. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, they were in Southwest Detroit. You know, I was on the West Side, East Side, all that as well, and I had other crews, but you know, uh, I mentioned up those two cats, Pop and Tavio, because you know. They still loyal to me to this day, man. We best with friends and we hang out, you know, we still see each other and then, you know, kick it and chop it up. Yeah, that's dope. So you would say like, were you, you was like one of the first major players out in Detroit type shit? Yeah, I, I, I would say so, you know, it's not, and one of the youngest too, you know. Yeah. Uh, in the series, they got, you know, Wood, you know, uh, as an OG, but I started the 50 boys off when I was like 21, 20. Mm. So you was so, moving early. I, I was, you know, I was, I was moving eight, eight in the rock. Word. <laughs> so what was like, what was like the culture and shit back then? Like going, <coughs> being born in Detroit, moving to New York, then going back to Detroit. Like, did people know you was from New York and shit? Like, how was all that? Oh, definitely. But you, uh, people knew, um, I, I was from New York because we would come. My mother would send us uh, uh, from New York to Detroit, you know, every summer for like, you know, maybe a month or so, you know, but I didn't want to stay every, you know, I didn't yeah. want to go and I didn't stay long as my sister stayed. I always wanted to come on back to, to New York, you know, because, you know, I was in them streets. You know, I wanted to get back to them streets. But when we, you know, came from every summer, so everybody, you know, the I have friends and uh, and family members that knew, you know, we were from New York. You yeah. Know? It, wasn't, it, it wasn't no secret. Everybody knew that. They Word. Were. That's dope. So, like, you said, so, how was, when you came back to Detroit, how quick did you, like, meet, like, meet your T and all that? Okay, well, before, okay, let, let me, let me uh, uh, go a little ahead before, I mean. Yeah. Okay. I was on the west side with uh, 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 these these cats uh, named Reggie and Bear, and you know that that's uh, that's where I started up with them. Okay, and uh, we had uh, my family owned a car wash out there where all you know all the you know big shooters, the, the YBIs, all the, the guys that had a big bags would yeah. come up car wash, and you know so that's how I got Bear. And what was Bear, the name of that hood? Like what was that hood called? That was the West Side. You were talking about Jory Road, Jory Road, Quincy, Dexter, Linwood area, all, all that area over there. That's where the YBI area is. The YBI, you know, Dexter and Jory Road and all that. Yeah. I started up there, and uh, and uh, uh, I ran out. I, I told Barry and Reggie uh, about Southwest Detroit Eco. It's like Ecos, man. Where the fuck is Ecos? What is Ecos? So they wasn't with it. I'm like, I'm not with what y'all doing here, you know, because I was raised to be a boss, man. Yeah. And, and so I just took off, man, you know. At first, y'all, uh, 
I, I was getting a bag from Reggie, and then I got too big. This shit got too big, you know, for him. From so, I, you know, my cousin was dating Norman Sneed, YBI, mm-hmm. you know? and and uh, she introduced me to him, and you know, and, and, and that's when me and Sneed took off. You know, I you know getting big bags from him. And, and just tearing the town up, man. They couldn't understand it. You know, I was giving those two for ones, and, and, and my prices were so, they, they yeah. just was like, New York nigga come out here doing this, man. You know, I was, I was just, man, knocking them out. I know that I kill people. But what is, so what What exactly y'all was dealing with? Like, it wasn't Bud. Like, y'all was dealing with Bud. Was Bud, like, was weed into play at that time? We was into play, like, but I, I, I really, you know, wasn't big into the weed. I, you know, I, I dabbled into the weed thing, you know, but, you know, mainly my thing was that white powder, man. Yeah. I mean, and that was like, what was like the clientele for that back then? Well, back then, I mean, it, 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 the clientele for, for back then, it, it was like today. I mean, you had, you know, you, I had that, the corporate clientele. Yeah. I didn't give that street too much, you know, because, because uh, I was like more of a corporate kind of type of guy, man. You know, I you know, would never got my hands dirt. I stayed like in office, man, and did my thing, man. And I dealt, I dealt with you know high class people, man. You know, lawyers and attorneys, attorney, man, all type of people like that, man. You know, people that own a business, own businesses, and all that. You know, I, I had a good clientele like that. You wow. know, I, I never, you know, I was re- very picky you know, and. And I want to say this too. Uh, I'm not glorifying the yeah. street. Never that, because you know, uh, it, it chose me. I didn't choose it. You know, I didn't have to do it. You know, but you know, my because my family, you know, we was well off. I didn't have to do it, but it was, it it was in my, it, in my blood, man. I was from pimps, man. Yeah. From, from the numbers. To you know, drugs. All the men in my family were street men, and and it was just you know, I that taste couldn't get out my mouth, man. Yeah. Do you um you pay attention to what's going on today and shit? Like you like back then, you said you ain't. It really chose you. Like you feel like people that get into the game today is they even like worth it? Like I feel like back then, I used to really like really run into money, and it it was more safer in a sense. You feel me? Like you. <laughs> Man, because, because right now, man, a motherfucker couldn't even give me a, a hundred bricks. And, I mean, give it to me. And, yeah. and I'll now, man. Because the game now, man, it is it's just totally different. It's the, the street life is totally different, man. It's it's like it's twisted, you mm-hmm. know. It's it's, it's three, three values that I lived upon, man. And, and it was my platform, it was loyalty, family, and trust. Okay, and these these cats now, man, they they use this word just the boss. Yeah, heard too likely, and they don't know really know what a boss is. Okay, you know what I'm saying? You look at look up in the dictionary, boss a person in charge of an organization, group of or a work, but it's also person in charge and head uh, is the head of a family. Okay. Uh, at, Take care of the uh, family. They, they it be the head of the household, man. You know what I'm saying? Their family should not want for anything. You see your family hurt, man. They shouldn't have to ask you, okay? That's a boss, okay? Right. Yeah, your family, man. You know, instead of, you know, because you, you be, these guys be so into popping these bottles at, at the clubs, money and doing this, you know, you, uh, you know, flying here, flying there, doing this and doing that. Man, but and, and they family ain't equal, you know. I, I, you know, it's just, it's just not. I wouldn't like that, man. It is, it's, it's in the game. It's just twisted to me now. And then, then you got to deal with these snitching motherfuckers and, and for real, because you don't know, man. I, it's, it's like, man, you don't know who to trust for real now, man. That's a fact. Now we gonna get back to the snitching though, but.